Saturday, me and my friend are going for lunch and to do some book shopping, and we're going to take you with us. Hi, Jess. Hi, Jess. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> And I had such a good day. So it was really nice to spend the day with my friend Jess. We went to this little Weatherspoons um, in a town just like down the road from where I'm from. And it was really nice. We had like a nice jack potato. It was just good. We had a laugh. And then it was absolutely pissing it down. But luckily I had a big golf umbrella. So we made it without getting absolutely drenched. We went to an amazing little bookshop. I'm going to talk about that one at the end. We also went to like quite a few charity shops. Like before and after. So I'm going to talk about the three finds that I found in the little charity shop. And then I'm going to talk about number eight. I don't remember what charity shops I got these in in the end. Um, I think these two were from a Sue Rider. But I'm not sure. So I picked up The Haunted House by Charles Dickens. Now you guys know me, I'm not really one for classics, but my friend Jess is a massive classics reader. Um, she really likes her classics. And I just thought it would be, if there was a classic that I was going to love, this might be it. I've never heard of it, but um, on the back it's talking about uh, this guy. Oh, he moves into an abandoned haunted house and I think he gets his friends around and they spend a bit of time there. And then after a set amount of time, they talk about all the spooky stuff they've experienced. Um... Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be for me, but it might be worth a try. And it's quite short, so I don't want to read more classics. Like, it's not, like, a goal of mine or anything, but it might be quite a fun one to have on my shelf. And then I also bought The Dead Men Stood Together by Chris Priestley. I have never heard of this book, but Jess found this in number eight in hardback and was like, I can't believe you missed this. It sounds like your sort of thing. And I had, like, literally missed it on the shelf. Um, and it's sort of her sort of thing as well. So I was like, oh, you know, you snooze, you lose. But yeah, it sounds really, really good. And then the next shop that we went into also had it. Which is crazy because I've never heard of it. And this it kind of sounds like it's a ghost ship. So there's, like, a young sailor's first voyage should be an adventure. The ship's blown off course. And then another ship 
approaches at a natural speed. It brings unimaginable horrors that will drive the boy and the rest of the crew to the edge of madness and the depths of darkest terror. It sounds really cool. So again, quite another little short read. I don't know whether it's like YA, I've never heard of it, um, but it sounds fun. Ghost Ship, that sounds cool, right? So I got that one. By the way, these two together were a pound because the charity shop had books two for a pound and Jess managed to get like hardbacks and they were still two for a pound. She got like Becoming by Michelle Obama and uh, something by Bridget Collins and Hamnet all in this. I think she got like six books for three quid. It was mad. Um, so they cost me a pound combined. And then I managed to get Billy Summers by Stephen King for £1.50. Um, it's in pretty good nick, to be honest. Like maybe a little bit um, creased around the very edges of the dust jacket, but really not worth noticing. Um, and this is Stephen King's kind of one of his newest books. I think it only came out like last year. Yeah, 2021. So I've almost bought this so many times in Tesco's and I kept putting it off, but you can't really say no for £1.50, can you? So I shall add that to my king shelf. And then number eight, the old bookshop. This was the highlight of the day for me. I walked in and just knew I was going to love it. It's a charity bookshop, but it doesn't feel like a charity bookshop. It feels like a little independent. I looked it up afterwards and I think it's for a deaf charity, which is amazing. And it's just, oh, it's like the coziest little shop. All the books are pre-owned, but they're all in really good condition. I spent about £10, maybe £10.50. Wait until you see what I got. <laughs> so the first thing I found was Lair by James Herbert. This is the second book in The Rats. I wasn't sure if I was going to continue it, but this was like £1.75. So I thought I'd give it a go. I read The Rats last year uh, and it's basically in London like not long after the second world war well no it is after it is a long time after the second world war but th these streets are still quite damaged I think it was like in the early 70s and um there are rats everywhere and they're kind of mutating and this is the second one so it will be good to kind of give it a go a lot of my kind of older horrors that I'm getting I have been mass market so even though this doesn't match the rats that I have, I'm not too fussed about it. Um, I'm just, I'm just happy to kind of give this one a go. I then found a John Mars, <laughs> which I was very excited for. So this is When You Disappeared. Um, all she wanted was the truth, but she'll wish she never found it. I, this one wasn't on my list, but again, it, it was £1.25. And I'm just keeping my eye out for any John Mars, to be honest because I really, really want to read more. So this is about a woman. Um, she wakes up alone one morning. She thinks her husband's gone maybe to the office or for a run, um, but he hasn't. And he only he knows why he's left and what he's done. He knows things about his marriage that it would kill Catherine to find out. The memories she holds on to are lies. I don't really need to know more. Um, I'm just very, very excited to read more John Mars. So I couldn't leave the shop without this one. So I think this was the first thing that I saw as I walked into the shop and I couldn't believe it because it wasn't on my radar until like earlier this week. Uh, and that is The Passage by Justin Cronin. This was on those polls that I was running uh, on Instagram, which is for a future video. It didn't win. Um, I was looking for some ones that did win. I didn't find any of those, but I couldn't. I couldn't walk away without getting it because one, look at the size of it. And this it was also £1.25. I mean, I couldn't just not get it because it was on that poll because it sounded really interesting and it does sound really interesting. This is about like, uh, it's like a dystopian where something has been released from a facility and has spread and I don't know what it does to people, but there is this six-year-old girl and this FBI guy trying to get somewhere and to safety. Uh, I don't know. I had no idea it was so huge. Um, but yeah, I just... I had to give that one a go. I I'm glad it didn't win the poll, purely because I've just been able to find it. But that's fine. I would like to get to this at some point. So, what a find. This is the most expensive book that I bought today. I think it was four twenty-five in the end. However, um, it is one that I really want to read at some point, so I thought I might as well get it. And that is 112263 by Stephen King. All I know about this one is it's about the JFK assassination. I think it involves 
time travel. I think he's trying to stop JFK from being assassinated. I'm not sure. This was written in 2011. I thought this was way older than that. Um, so yeah, I mean, what results to find two more Stephen Kings? I, there were more Stephen Kings, but a lot of them I owned. And I did see Dolores Claiborne, which I almost bought, but I didn't particularly like the edition and it wasn't in the best condition, but it was still like a fiver. And I also saw Lizzie's story, Lizzie's story, which I also almost bought, but there was something on the front cover. So I left it. But this one, I mean, it's in really, really good condition. Really good condition. I've got to say those two Stephen King books were the only two books in that whole shop that I saw that weren't in like perfect condition or like near perfect condition so that's not bad for a charity shop um but yeah this was an absolute steal as far as i'm concerned because it's a hardback um and it's huge which is to be expected from stephen king to be honest i've heard really really good things about this one so i was very excited my best purchase of the day without a shadow of a doubt this cost me one pound one pound and that is The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. This was on my radar because my friends B and Anne buddy read it together and were like, you need to read it. You need to read it. You're going to love it. They absolutely raved about it. I love Garth Nix anyway. He wrote Sabriel, which I love that series. I have like not, not put this on my list for any particular reason. I just hadn't got around to kind of reading what it was about. Um, but a pound. A pound. This was released two years ago, if that, 2020? Yeah, 2020. Look at it. I mean, I actually did a double take when she said it was a pound. It's spotless. I, I said, sorry, how much are these? And she said, oh, the hardback's in that shelf for a pound. I went, I'm sorry? <laughs> she started laughing. She said, you can pay more if you want to. And I was like, damn like i can't believe it's a pound i'm literally still a bit shocked about it to be honest the absolute only thing is slight bit of creasing on the dust jacket on the inside but if i just flatten them out i mean that'll just flatten a little bit in the shelves and i'm not really uh i'm not really looking at the inside of the dust jackets to be honest so i'm not really fussed i literally i can't get over that i literally can't get over it a pound freaking pound it's been such a good day I've had so much fun like I hope that I managed to get some good footage for you I was a little bit nervous about filming in public so um it's probably not the best and I'm not in anything because I was kind of like this like just filming out a little bit so I don't think I'm in much apart from that one bookshop where I it was a bit quiet and I managed to find a place to just prop my phone up but hopefully there was enough to kind of make a fairly decent video <laughs> I hope it's okay let me grab all these books so there is everything that I managed to buy today. I'm um, really interested to know your thoughts on any of these if you've read them. In total, I spent less than £15. Number eight, I would definitely be going back there again. The people in the shop were so lovely. Talked to us about what we were buying. They chatted to us like when we were walking around the shelves. They were just really kind of welcoming. Really, really nice guys. I uh, can't wait to go back again. We said we'll try and go like a co every couple of months and kind of let it all turn over and things. But they had a great little horror section, a great fiction section, so much. It was just so nicely done. I hope that come across in what I've managed to film. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books in the comments below. Or if you just want me to know you're here, that purple heart was always appreciated. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed and you'd like to see more bookish content from me, hit that button. Leave a like if you want to and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Oh, I look like a looky loo oh, now. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> How is your J2A? You could just try to think of a clever word to describe a J2A. <laughs> is it ruining your ambiance? It's ruining the aesthetic. <laughs> just walking. Die. <laughs> I'm starting to worry for if my there's life. Any fit of fire engine men, fire engine men, fire ambulance men. Fire ambulance men. <laughs> Do you think? Wow. You wouldn't mind me trapping it in my boot and using a lamp. <laughs> I'm still videoing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that you didn't know I was still videoing.